Right everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's a good start. So basically we're getting a lot of work done on the house, the kitchen to be precise at the moment. This video may sound, may look a little bit different. As you can see, I'm using the lavalier mic. I've had to move the camera a good bit closer. The lights are in a different place. This video may be very different to what you're used to but get used to it because I am back, 67 Hill Hill is back on YouTube, we didn't really go away, but we've got lots to talk about. Ange Postacoglu set to be named the Celtic manager later this week. It's very close, so we hear. I'm not going to make the same mistake I did in the past with Eddie Howe. You are looking at a guy who paid the best part of 30 quid to get two Eddie Howe mugs made, and to be honest, the only mug that was made out of the whole situation, well, you're looking at them right here. But Ange should be coming into Celtic later this week. A few reports in the various papers and online sources say Celtic want to announce it by Wednesday, which is tomorrow, I believe. So we could be looking at something happening quite quickly here. He won't be in Scotland at that stage, although Celtic do hope to have him in Glasgow by the weekend. Postacoglu will have to quarantine for 10 days, I believe, after coming from Japan. I'm a little bit surprised and a little bit confused as to why that's the case. I thought that elite athletes were exempt from quarantine. I know he's not an elite athlete in the sense of being a player, but he is a manager who works after elite athletes, so I thought he'd have some sort of exemption with regards to that. He may well do, but everywhere I'm seeing reported is that Postacoglu will have to come into Scotland and quarantine for the regulatory 10 days. Now, he will have plenty of stuff to keep him occupied during that 10 day wait. He will have loads and loads of things. Odds and Edward, Christopher Eyer, two players who now look even more certain than they were a week ago to be leaving Celtic this summer. Edward looks like he's gonna to go to Leicester. I believe the chat is around about £15 million for that one. Christopher Eyer has, I think, two or three clubs after him. I know Newcastle, and Norwich, and I think Bayer Leverkusen in Germany have been linked with him as well. So these are two players who I think have spoken out in the last six months, Eyer more recently, about their need to leave Celtic and their need to leave Celtic this summer. Two of our best players, probably. Two of our most influential players, plus Scott Brown, certain to be leaving the club this summer. This isn't really new, startling news, but it is just even more evidence of the huge job ahead of Postacoglu going into next season. He will also have to work out who his backroom staff are going to be. He may already know that, he may not. Will John Kennedy stick around at Celtic? Will Gavin Strachan still be part of the club? These are all things that he's going to have to tackle. Lots and lots of speculation over the last few days about whether a former Rangers player, Kevin Muscat, would even be joining at him. All that just suggests to me that this is really up in the air at the moment. Oh, and Sporting Director. What the hell is happening with our Sporting Director? I'm more than a bit concerned about Celtic's recruitment this summer. Now, I even said when Eddie Howe has been linked with the job that as much as I felt that Eddie Howe would be a, a massive capture for Celtic, and I still maintain that he would have been, I think the recruitment this summer was always going to be the most important thing, even above who our new manager was going to be. We have so much work to do, and we're now just six weeks away from our first Champions League qualifier. Now, when you consider we've got to sign effectively a new team in that time, we've got to get them up to speed in training, buying into the manager's um, preferences and his manager's ideas to the, the greatest extent they can before playing a good side in Europe. Now, I reiterate for the millionth time in the channel, we aren't going into this first qualifier playing against a Faroese or an Icelandic team. We're going to be playing either Galatasaray, Rapid Vienna or Mietzschland. So Fergal Harkin is not coming in. Nick Hammond has left the club what seems like months ago now. So who's going to be signing players for Celtic this summer? Are we going to be signing players we're already aware of? And if so, who has devised that list in the past? Is the list still up to date? Is it reliable? If it's Nick Hammond that's devised it, then can we trust those signings? He didn't exactly have a great record last season. Will we sign players familiar to Postacoglu? 
huge risk for me if we do that. Now, say what you want about the manager. I'm actually quite hopeful for the job he could do at Celtic. But to ask a guy who has never managed in Europe, save for a few months spell in Greece 20 years ago, to pick players to sign for Celtic when he isn't familiar with European football, never mind British, never mind Scottish football, is a huge gamble for me. But if it's not Postacoglu and it's not a list already devised there, who is actually going to be signing players for Celtic this summer? It's a major, major worry. It has to be. Now, one person who it doesn't seem like will have any real say in transfers this summer is Peter Law. In fact, Peter Law may well be finished at Celtic. His spell as Celtic Chief Executive may well be over now. A number of places on the wonderful internet that has somehow crashed and burned on Tuesday have reported that Peter Law has already left Celtic. Now, it's not been anywhere you would necessarily really trust, but it has been mentioned by a lot of Celtic fans. Now, after just slagging off Celtic Underground there, I'll pay tribute to them. Their most recent podcast was really, really interesting, and their main person, Harry Brady, who is, loves a wee rumour now and again, gets it right sometimes, gets it wrong other times, he reckons that Peter Law has actually finished at Celtic and finished on Friday at 5pm. Now, I also heard from a source inside Celtic without acting on ITK that that was the case as well, and that Peter Law has finished at Celtic. So that is promising. It means that Dominic Mackay will now be the main person. He now has nobody to hide behind. Dominic has to come and face the music, face the cameras, answer questions, and I really hope that we will finally hear from him in the next seven days. Surely, sitting beside Ange Postacoglu, Celtic's new manager, and maybe even touch wood, a sporting director. And Mackay, in particular, will have a lot of questions to answer. He should talk about Ange Postacoglu and explain why Celtic have gone for such a risky appointment. Now, again, I reiterate, I think Postacoglu could, and I actually do think he will be a successful Celtic manager, but it's a huge risk. We have plucked a guy who has never managed in the top league of a European nation, who's spent the most of his career in Australia and in Asia, and we've brought him into the club at a hugely critical interval. And I would just love to hear Celtic talking about why they've decided to make this move. Was it just that he was there, he was available? Is there a genuine link between Celtic and the City group featuring Man City and Yokohama Marinos, New York City, etc.? There certainly seems to be a bit of a link. Maybe it's just chance. But will Celtic answer these kind of questions? And will they also answer the questions I've already raised in this video, like what is happening with the sporting director? Something that has been talked about for six, seven months. What is happening there? What is happening with recruitment at the club this summer? And when are we going to see the signs of Dominic Mackay at Celtic? Because he's been at the club, I think, a couple of months now. He's mainly been learning from Peter Law. I don't know what he'd be learning, but that's what he's mainly been doing. But I'm yet to see any real evidence of Dominic Mackay at Celtic. Has there been a real change in the club's communication? Not at all. It's been the same tone. And when that happens, more and more Celtic fans are increasingly worried that this is just a continuation on from what happened under Peter Law. And he really needs to get away from that as early as possible. So speak to us, Dominic Mackay. Tell us your exciting plans for Celtic. Tell us all about this wonderful manager that we've just plucked from Asia. And tell us what we can do together. Celtic fans, Postacoglu, Mackay, other people at the club, what we can achieve going forward. Make us all excited. We have so much good content coming in the next few days. We start our Euros preview tomorrow. We have Jackie McNamara and Ewan joining me to chat all about some of the Celtic players who could make a big impact at the summer's competition. We'll chat about Scotland, Scotland's group. We'll chat about the competition as a whole, as well as some of Jackie's memories from 1998. That one is not to be missed. Of course, if there is any Celtic news between now and the start of the Euros, we'll cover that extensively 
on the channel as well. I have a team of people who are ready to go a live video within five minutes of any major announcement, so you'll be well catered for. But yeah, it's full steam ahead with the Euro stuff from tomorrow. Remember to subscribe to the channel, everyone. It really, really does help me, helps me with my boss, and everyone else at 67 Hail Hail to grow. Check out all the writing on 67 and we'll speak to you very soon.